The orphan Oliver Twist has been recaptured by Fagin's gang from his kindly guardian, Mr. Brownlow. And Fagin has mysteriously insisted that Bill Sykes should take Oliver to help him in the burglary of a large house at Chertsey. But the burglary has gone badly wrong and Sykes has fled, leaving Oliver wounded by a gunshot. Indeed, Mrs. Mann. We were to give away five pound of potatoes and three loaves of bread this very afternoon. Oh. And yet them paupers are still not happy. When would they be, Mr. Bumble? When indeed. Give them an apron full of coals today and they'll come back for another the day after tomorrow. As brazen as alabaster. Oh, I've never seen anything like the pitch it's got to. Nor I, Mum. The day before yesterday, a man... With scarce a rag on his back. Oh, Mr Bumble. Oh, you have been a married woman, Mrs Mann. I may mention it to you. <laughs> this man goes to our overseer's door when he has company coming to dinner and says he must be relieved. Well, he wouldn't go away and was spoiling the party. So our overseer sent him out a pound of potatoes and half a pint of oatmeal. My God, says the ungrateful villain, what's the use of this to me? Very good. You won't get anything else here, says our overseer, and he takes them back again. Oh, no, yes, the game. Give the paupers what they don't want, and they get tired of coming. <laughs> then I'll die in the streets, says this vagrant. Oh, no, you won't, says the overseer. So, what happened? He went away and he did die in the streets. There's an obstinate pauper for you. Hmm. Uh, uh, this is a port wine, ma'am, that the board has ordered. I thought you might like a bottle. Oh, thank you indeed, Mr Bumble. <clears throat> oh, you have had a very cold walk, Mr Bumble. It blows, ma'am, enough to cut one's ears off. Uh, would you care to take a glass of your port? Oh, uh, well... <laughs> <laughs> Sit you down and take off your coat. Oh, <laughs> indeed, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, indeed. Oh, you uh, have a cat bar, I perceive. And kittens, too. Basking in the kitchen by the fire. <laughs> Very nice animals, cats, ma'am. Very domestic. Oh, yes. <laughs> and they're so fond of their home that it's quite a pleasure, I'm sure. <laughs> Mrs. Mad Mom, I mean to say this that any cat that could live with you and not be fond of its home must be an ass. Oh, Mr Bumble. <laughs> it's of no use disguising the facts, ma'am. I would drown it myself with pleasure. Well, then you're a cruel man and a very hard-hearted man besides. <laughs> oh, hard-hearted, ma'am? Hard. Are you hard-hearted, Mrs Mann? Oh, dear me. <laughs> What a very curious question from a single man. <laughs> what can you want to know for, Mr Bumble? You'll not be hard out of him, me, I trust. <gasps> oh. oh, Mr Bumble, oh, put me down. Hey, Mr Bumble, I shall scream. Oh, Mr Bumble. <laughs> oh, who's there? 
Sally's mistress. Oh, Sally's going far. Oh, it's after me. I can't keep her alive, can I? No, mistress, no one can. She's past all helping now. But she's troubled in her mind. And she says she's got something to tell you, which you must hear. She won't die till you come, mistress. Oh, these paupers, they won't even die without annoying their betters. They do it on purpose, Mum. Mr Bumble. Hmm? Don't go away. <laughs> Ah, <laughs> oh, and that's two doubles in the rub. I've never seen such a fella as you, Dodger. You win everything. Even when I get good cards, I can't make nothing of them. Oh, what's the matter, Charlie? The matter for you? I ain't won a blessed point. <laughs> oh, my dear. You must get up very early in the morning to win against the artful. Morning? Got to keep your boots on overnight if you want to put one over on him. <laughs> Cute. What's up with you? Ah, precious dull you are, Charlie. You what? Oh, I heard a tinkler. See him, see him. Quick! It's Toby. What? Hello? How are you, Faggy? See here, Faggy. See these boots. Not a drop of day and Martin since you know when. Not a bubble of blacking by Joe. Bah. Don't look at me like that, man, all in good time. I can't talk about business till I've ate and drank, so come on, produce the sustenance. Let's have a quiet fill-out for the first time in three days. Here, take it. Ah. Now, speak out, Toby. You settled now. Mm. Oh, there's timing now. No, by God, there ain't. Speak out. Oh. First and foremost, Fagin. Yes, yes. Mm. Oh, this gin is excellent. <laughs> first... And foremost, Faggy, how's Bill? What? What? You, you don't mean to say mean, that you... Mean? Where are they? Sarge and the boy. Where are they? Why have they not been here? The, the crack failed. Oh, no, it, it's in the papers. It's everywhere. What more? But they fired and, and hit the boy. We cut over the fields at the back, with in between us. <laughs> they gave chase through edge and ditch. Well, damn me, the whole country was awake, and the dogs upon us. The boy. It was every man for himself, and each from the gallows. Well, we split up and left the youngster lying in a ditch. Alive or dead, that's all I know about him. <laughs> Mummy. Why is the boy so important? I've got a heavy back. Well, he's... He's probably dead in a ditch. What's that having back? Dodger, go and find him. Who? Oliver? Nah, you know. Here. You don't mean monks. Monks. I ain't going near him. Who's he when he's at home? Some new pal of yours and he's faking, but he gives me the creeps. He's got to know. Tell him to come here tomorrow night without fail. Tell him it's about the boy. You're going, Dodger. Am I ever? You're all right. All right, I'll go. My dad! And what are you going to do? I'll go to Bill's house. He's got to be back. He's got to be. Oh, Lammy. What's so important about the blessed boy? Oh. Cold night, Mrs. Mann. Oh, very cold, Doctor. Very. Oh. Now, what's this woman got to tell me? Oh, it's all UP with her, Mrs. Mann. Is it? If she lasts ten minutes, I should be surprised. Oh. Is she dozing, old lady? Mm. Mm. Damn me, I thought you said it was urgent. Now, don't you ever worry me again for nothing. It's no part of my duty to see all the old women in this house die. Oh, is that... Oh, shh. Oh, shh. Lie down. Lie down. I'll never lie down again alive. Oh, we'll tell her. Uh, come here. Oh. Near. Oh. Let me whisper in your ear. Turn them away. Make haste, make haste. Humour her, Doctor, or we'll be here all night. No. And you. Off you go. Well, then, what is it? Oh, listen, listen. In this very room, this very bed, I once nursed a pretty young creature that was brought into the house with a, a thick cut and bruised by walking. She gave birth to a boy and died. Let me think. What was the year again? Oh, never 
never mind the year. Oh, what about her? Uh, what? What about her? What? Oh, oh, no. I robbed her. Hmm? So I did. She wasn't cold. She wasn't cold, I tell you. When I stole it. Stole what, for God's sake? The only thing she had. It was gold. Gold? Rich gold that might have saved her life. Go on, go on. What of it? She charged me to keep it safe. But I stole it in my heart when she first showed it to me hanging round her neck. Hmm? And the child's death perhaps is on me besides. Oh, they'd have treated him better if they'd known it all. Known what? The boy. He grew so like his mother that I could never forget it when I saw his face. Quick, or it may be too late. What was the boy's name? They called him Oliver. The, the gold I stole is... Yes, yes, what? Uh, Where? Uh, oh, let go, the stupid old crow clean to my... Coattails, even when you're dead. Hello. What's this? Oh. Nancy! Nancy, wake up. It's fighting. Been drinking, hey? Nancy! <laughs> Where should you think Bill was now, my dear? How can I tell? And Oliver too. Poor little child. Left in a ditch, Nancy. Only think. The boy's better off where he is than among us. I hope he lies dead in the ditch and let his young bones rot there. What? I do. I should be glad to have him away from my eyes and to know that the worst is over. The sight of him turns me against myself. And all here. Ugh, you're drunk. Am I? It'd be no fault of yours if I wasn't. <laughs> You'd never have me anything else if you had your way. This is the way you drag. If he comes back and leaves the boy behind him, if he gets off free and fails to restore the boy to me, you'd better murder him yourself if you want him to escape the hangman. What is all this? What is it? When the boy's worth hundreds of pounds to me, am I to lose him through the bungling of a drunken gang? Oliver? Of hundreds of pounds? What do you mean? Nothing. Nothing, Nancy. Nothing at all. I, 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 I. Bill? Bill? Mr. Monks? I've been looking for you all night. What are you doing here? Business, my dear. Your business. Your business. It's not her business. Get her out of here. Come stay. Nancy, Nancy, this isn't the time. I don't even know this cove. Get her out. Who is he? A business partner, as you might say. That's secret, my dear, secret. So get out. Now. Shut the door. You've seen the paper. The crack failed. With the boy. Was it Oliver? Monks. Did you send Oliver? Did you? I did. And you left him there. You left him there. Not me. Sykes. It flashed Toby Crackett. Why send him on a job like that? Will you get him back, my dear? Why could you not keep him here with the rest and make a sneaking, snivelling pickpocket of him? Oh, only hear him. Haven't you dined with other boys scores of times? Mm-hmm. If you'd had patience for a month or two, couldn't you have got him convicted and sent safely out of the kingdom, perhaps for life? It wasn't easy to train him to the business. 
He, he was not like other boys in the same circumstances. Oh, curse him, no. Well, he would have been a thief long ago. I had nothing to frighten him with, which we must always have in the beginning. Oh, we labour in vain. What could I do? Just send him out with the Dodger and Charlie. Look what happened when we did that. Disaster. Arrested in ten minutes. I'll not quarrel with that. If that hadn't happened, I might not have clapped eyes upon him as I did and realised it was him I was looking for. And you showed some talent in getting him back. Quite so, my dear. Now, you want Oliver made a thief. If he is alive, I can make him one from this time. And if, if, it's not likely, mind. But if the worst comes to the worst, and he is dead. <laughs> it's no fault of mine if he is. You mind that, Fagin? I had no hand in it. Anything but his death, I, I told you from the first. What? I won't shed good. And it's always found out when haunts a man decides. If they shot him dead, I must have a cause. Do you hear me? What oh, damn it, What was that? What? Where? On the stairs. Nancy. Nancy? She's not here. Must have gone out for more gin. I swear there was someone listening. There's no one in the house beside ourselves. It's past one o'clock. What's the next move, Mr. Bunks? You do all in your power to find the boy, be he dead or alive. And I have some evidence to destroy. Evidence, my dear? You handle your business, I'll handle mine. As you say, my dear, as you say. Good night. I hardly think so. The police are coming back in a few minutes. And if oh. Oliver's well enough, Brownlow, they're going to arrest him. No, Grimmick, no. I beg you, don't press charges. Listen to him. And you, Rose, please listen to the boy. Brownlow, you really are no, quite... Let's hear him. Oh. Oliver, do you swear they forced you to it? Yes, Mr. Brownlow, for my word. Yeah. Mr. Sykes dragged me here in the dead of night. I didn't know what it was for until they... They drew out their masks and pistols, sir. And they pushed me through the... Through the... The hatch? Yes. And I remember nothing more. Now I... They say... Oh, he's going to faint. Oh, poor boy. Oh. Poor boy. I'm taking him home with me. Brown low. It is all a performance. No, father, I'm not... Good a... God, man, you'll not be fooled again. They're here. I will be fooled again. If it means the boy can be safe and well, I will be fooled again. If the police arrest him, he'll be dead in a week. Rose, have the constable shown into the study. Give them your report about the burglary, but say you'll not be pressing charges against the boy. Brownlow! Oh, he's ill, man. And I believe him. Yes, twice I believe him. I'm taking Oliver home to Penderville, and you'll have to eat your head. Mr. Bumble, you are the beadle of this parish, are you not? Indeed I am, sir. And have been these 15 years? Uh, 16, sir. 16 this very week. You have the same eye to your own interests that you always had, I doubt not. What? Oh, don't scruple to answer freely, man. I know you pretty well, you see. Oh, I'm not averse to earning an honest penny when I can. Now listen to me. I came down to this village today to find you out. And by one of those chances that the devil throws in the way of his friends sometimes, I walk into the very room you're drinking in while you are uppermost in my mind. <laughs> I want some information from you. Now, I don't ask you to give it for nothing, slight as it is. Put that up to begin with. <coughs> Now, carry your memory back. Let me see. Nine years last winter. Oh, it's a long time. <coughs> oh, very good. I've done it. The scene, the workhouse. Good. And the time, night. Yes. And the place, the crazy hole in which miserable women give birth to whining children from the parish to rear and hide their own shame. God rot them in the grave. The maternity room, I suppose. Yes. A boy was born there. 
Many more he has. I speak of one, a meek-looking, pale-faced hound, who was apprenticed down here to a coffin maker. Why, you mean Oliver? Ah. Young Tweet. Oh, I remember him, of course. There wasn't an obstinate young rascal. It's not of him I want to hear. <laughs> it's of a woman, the hag that nursed his mother. Where is she? Where is she? Mm. It would be hard to tell. There won't be a workhouse there, whichever place she's gone to. <laughs> what do you mean? That she died on Tuesday. Well, no matter then, no matter. There was a woman, though. Yes? No, no. What? Well, there was a woman who was closeted with the old hag shortly before she died, and she had something to tell her with her last words. Something terrible important, it seemed. How can I find her? Only through me. When? Tomorrow. At nine in the evening. At nine in the evening. Bring her to me. There. I needn't tell you to be secret. Uh, what do you want to Well, I wanted to ask you a question. What name am I to ask for? Monks. Mm-hmm. We have our separate ways. Don't follow me. Now go. This can't possibly be the place. The old mill by the river, he said. <laughs> by the river? Half of it's in the river. The other half's about to follow. Can't be right. Let me see the paper he gave you. Um, oh, God, I've lost it. I could have sworn I put it in my waistcoat pocket. Man's an imbecile. Oh, no, no, my pigeon. Here it is. Mm. Oh, I just got it. He's the place. He must be a respectable sort. Is this the one? Oh, oh, oh. Uh, yes, <laughs> this is she. Hear it! Hear it! <gasps> Rolling a crash of gone as if it echoed through hell. Fire the sound I hated. These these fits come over me now and then, and, and thunder sometimes brings them on. Don't, don't, don't mind me now. It's all over for this once. Now. The sooner we come to our business, the better for all. The woman knows what it is, does she? Yes. He is right in saying that you were with this hag the night she died, and that she told you something. About the mother of Oliver Twist, yes. Yes. The first question is, of what nature was her communication? Uh, That's the second question. The first is, what may the communication be worth? Well, how the devil do I know without knowing of what kind it is? You had better bid. Well... Is it about something that was taken from her? Something that she wore? Give me five and twenty pounds in gold, (laughs) and I'll tell you all I know. Five and twenty pounds? It's not a large sum for a paltry secret that may be nothing when it's told, which has been lying dead for nine years or more. Such matters keep well. And like good wine, they often double their value in time. (laughs) What if I pay for nothing? You can easily take it away again if it is. I am but a woman, alone here and unprotected. I'm here, my dear. Quiet. Oh, here. I'll gather them up. Oh, when this cursed peal of thunder is gone, let's hear your story. <coughs> when this woman that we called Old Sally, died. She and I were alone. There was no one else by. No one else who could hear and possibly understand. Not a soul. Mm. I stood alone beside her body when death came over. Good. Go on. She spoke of a young creature who had brought a child into the world some years before, not merely in the same room, but in the same bed in which she then lay dying. I... Blood, how things come about. The child was the one you named to him last night, Oliver Twist. Mm. The mother, old Sally, had robbed. In life? In death. 
She stole from the corpse what the dead mother had begged her to keep for Oliver's sake. Did she sell it? Did she sell it? As she told me she had stolen it, she fell back and died. Died? Without saying more? It's a lie! I'll not be played with, she said more! I'll tear the life out of you both, but I'll know what it was! She didn't utter another word, Mm. but... She clenched my gown violently with one hand, and when I saw that she was dead and removed the hand by force, I found it clasped. A locket. Where is it now? Where is it? Here. Get it, Jim! It has the word Agnes engraved on the inside. <laughs> Listen, little man. I don't know anything about all this beyond what I can guess at, and I don't want to know, for it's safer not to. But just tell me this. Is that all you expected to get from me? It is. Come with me. Why is the locket so important? Never you mind. Come here. Don't move another step forward, or your life is not worth a bull rush. Look down. If you flung a man's body down there, where would it be tomorrow morning? Twelve miles down the river and cut to pieces beside. <laughs> the sea may sometimes give up its debt. Keep its gold and silver to itself, and that trash among it. We have never met. Now get away from here as fast as you can. In episode four of Oliver Twist by Charles Dickens, Mrs. Mann was Pam Ferris, Mr. Bumble, Roger Hume, and Mr. Monks, Kim Wall. Fagin was John Grillo, the Dodger, Richard Pierce, Charlie, Paul Ryan, Toby, David Holt, and Nancy, Adjoa Ando. Oliver was Edward Long, Brownlow, Peter Jeffrey, and other parts were played by Brett Usher, Teresa Gallagher, Joyce Gibbs, and Pat Quayle. The music was composed and played by John Kirkpatrick with cellist Catherine Locke. Oliver Twist was dramatised and directed at Pebble Mill by Nigel Bryant. <laughs>